Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video, I'll continue where I left off in my stylized tree tutorial and create a whole forest using the tree asset we made. Oh, and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. So this is where I left off in my last tutorial. You can see that we have our tree fully finished with a simple curve as a trunk and a leaf mesh that is instanced around our branches. We also have some simple materials. The first one giving every leaf a slightly different color and the second one is just a simple base color for our trunk. And now I want to create a whole landscape and scatter our tree around it to create a forest. Let's rename the collection we are right now in into tree, close it, create a new collection and name it landscape. We can now disable the tree collection and using the ANT landscape add-on, add in a simple landscape. For this video, I'll use a preset called Volcano and set the subdivisions to double the default amount. And now we can re-enable the tree collection so we can scale up our landscape to its correct scale. The mountain right now is way too high for me, so I'll just scale it down on the z-axis. We can continue by giving the landscape a new material and also naming it accordingly. And because everything right now is very simplistic and cartoony, I'll just give it a dark green color. The next step is to add in hair particles, which we'll later be using to scatter our tree around our landscape. So let's go into the particle tab, click on plus, hair, and also click on advanced. This way we can change the rotation of our trees later. Great, if we increase the number to maybe 10,000, you can see that our hairs are right now going everywhere. This is not exactly realistic, because trees wouldn't necessarily grow on steep cliffs, like this one right here. How can we fix this? Well, in the end panel, under Create, we now have the Landscape Tools panel. If we click on Weight from Slope and on OK, you can see that we get a slope mask. This new vertex group can be used to manipulate the density in the particle settings. And now you can see that on these cliff-like locations we get way less trees. And this is exactly what I wanted. Now we can already add the tree in our render panel. But firstly I want to decrease the number to a thousand just so our viewport stays nice and fast. Let's select collection and then tree. You can see that something has happened and that trees are beginning to be scattered around our terrain. But we do not see our leaves. This is because the leaves are still instance objects and this doesn't work with particle systems. So let's disable our landscape for a second and fix our tree mesh. If you expand the tree curve you can see that we have the leaves parented to it. These are all instance objects but we can make them real using the Ctrl A menu and the Make Instances Real option. So let's click it and let's quickly move them into their own collection with M. Great. If we disable this collection, you can see that the initial object that was used for instancing is still there. We can just select it and delete it. The initial leaf mesh can now also be deleted, as well as the collection I put it into. Now you might notice that if you select one of these newly created leaves and go into edit mode, they are still somehow linked together. We can change this by selecting everything, going to object, relations, make single user, object and data. Now you can see that the leaves aren't linked anymore. The last step would be to join them together with Ctrl J and because I also want to join them with the trunk mesh, I will select this curve, choose visual geometry to mesh and join them like this. And just like this we have our tree. If we go into rendered mode you can see that we have an issue and this is that the random output of the object info node doesn't work anymore. We now need to use the random per island output of the geometry node to get the same result as before. Now there's only one thing left to do and this is to add some variation to the instanced tree. So let's quickly combine these two outputs by shift right clicking across them and now let's add in a hue saturation and value node and use the random output of the object info node as a value. For later I also want to add in a math node and just add 0.5. You can now see that if we duplicate our tree, we'll get different values for the leaves. This will add more life to the forest later on. But let's quickly delete these trees and get back to our landscape. 
Now if we re-enable our landscape you can see that everything has been fixed. The trees are visible with their leaves, but the rotation is off. So let's select the landscape and choose object rotation. Let's enable rotation and choose global Z and with our initial tree selected, let's rotate it 90 degrees on its Y axis. And just like this, all of the trees are rotated correctly. But the origin of our tree isn't correct. So let's zoom in on it and under tool, select origins. And with the move tool, we can drag the origin to its correct place. And now you can see that all the trees are standing correctly on our landscape. If we go into rendered mode, you can see that everything works correctly. We can of course now tweak the materials to our liking and also adjust the particle placement. I for example want the trees to be a lot bigger and also have random scaling. We can now place our camera and snap it to where we are with Ctrl Alt and 0 on the numpad. And now we can increase the number of trees to for example 5000. If we go into rendered mode you can see that everything works as expected. For the whole duration of this tutorial I had scene world disabled, meaning that Blender uses its inbuilt HDRIs to light our scene. But the final render right now would look like this, which isn't really what I want. So let's quickly add in an HDRI to enter this tutorial. Let's add in the environment texture node and choose a simple HDRI. Plug it into the color input and now you can see that we have some nice lighting. Of course you can spice up your scene a little bit with maybe a cube that uses a volume material. But this of course is all up to you. And yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video next Saturday.